I mean, I challenge anybody to bring a dog to Richard that he can't fix. Gonna fall asleep soon. She's at a spa. This is spa day. <laughs> Yeah! Just like nothing already! No! No, not there. Go towards the bone. Keep it! Right. I'm doing it No, no, it's perfect. You just achieved something right now that you could never do. So this is one of our cases that we deal with all the time, all day. Antisocial, can't go near anything or anybody. It's a terrified dog in life. Try back. All right, we're ready. First breakthrough. First time he's been able to pet it. And he's a one up. He's a, he's not a one in a million. He's a one in the entire earth of a kind. Dog trainer. The absolute best there is. I've searched online everywhere. There's nobody that compares to Richard Hines. Come, sit. Hey, back. Down. Here's he come. Sit. Down. All right. Today, I'm going to be talking about food aggression, possession aggression. The reason that I'm going to talk about this today, and I'm going to do videos now coming on different types of aggression, fear, but this is a, a big problem that we're having in the industry, okay? And I want to give people the right guidance on how possession aggression or food aggression should be handled, okay? So we have many philosophies going on out there right now. And unfortunately, because of the new era of dog training, it's getting harder and harder for people who need help to find a trainer or behaviorist that can actually fix these behaviors and give the owner a real result. This is very rare today, okay? And it's because of all the new kinds of ways that the industry is trying to handle fear and aggression. And we're going further and further away from reality. Okay? So there is a truth to this. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you a little bit of foundation here before I give you the, the several floating philosophies and the way these trainers are going about this, these popular <laughs> dog trainers that are on TikTok, Instagram, and possibly YouTube, okay? So why are we getting more and more away from being able to truly fix behavior issues. And it is because we are getting further and further away from the truth of dog, all right? And they're hand in hand of, if you're gonna get true results, you will understand 
when I bring you back in a second to reality, then the industry right now and the newer movement of dog training that has gone way past what dog really is, okay, in fantasy land, all right? So I, I know this is hard for a lot of people to hear and handle. You know, when I tell new clients this, everybody usually kind of takes a back step and you can see their eyes and body, but then they grasp it when you lay it out, okay? It's just forgotten about, <laughs> which is very interesting, okay? Where most people today do not know or think of what dog really is and where it came from. It's still today the same as it was hundreds to whatever years ago, okay? There is no difference. In, in their genetic makeup of how dog sees the world when it's born, okay? So this is hard because if you don't have this outlook and foundation of dog, trainers and behaviorists are in big trouble. And that's why we have such an issue right now with very few trainers and behaviorists can actually get 100% result in fear and aggression because they're lacking this understanding of foundation. It's truly this simple, okay? Dog born today, still even domesticated, it's a physical game. It is a contact game where it's about dogs were meant to be bitten for discipline purposes, okay? So I've raised so many litters, a hundred, I don't know. And then all my friends who have raised litters that I've been around and breeders of mine. And I mean, I've been around a lot of litters, okay? Of all different kinds, working dogs, poodles, golden doodles, golden retrievers, shepherds, Rottweilers, all, I, I mean, it can go on and on. So I just want anybody out there that watches this to understand that anytime I speak of something, my 30-year experience on this, I've seen it all. I've been around it all, and I will not talk on a subject that I do not know 100% for sure, Okay. Just want people to know that's not my opinion. I don't do that because opinions are just opinions, okay? Opinions don't mean anything is real or it's true. There has to be things that have happened that you know for sure over and over and over and over again with different dogs, different types, different personalities, different that you have this example and a sample, big sample, that what you're doing as a trainer actually works. And it's long term. It's not just today. It's not next week. It lasts for years and forever. That I have is my sample size in my career. So that is how I know for sure when I talk about things that I know what I am saying. Okay. So, with litter, dogs, as soon as they're big enough to start moving around and eyes are open enough to be able to see things and see the other pups, it starts to become very aggressive in general, okay? No matter if it's a weak litter, and that will determine also if... The two parents are not that strong or a tough. You'll get a different type of aggression, much subtler than if you get a Malinois litter that's 
off the chain for police dog types where it's definitely going to be a tougher litter and you're going to see them eat each other up. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be brutal. But it's the game that must be played because that is species, okay? You cannot go around this. Science cannot go around this. No positive trainer or behaviorist can go about it, tell you differently. This is life. This is just the way nature is. You can't go around it. Even though the positive schools of thought and the new age trainers try to dance around this and ignore it and don't even think of it. Okay? So this is key in a trainer or behaviorist being able to take on fear aggression cases, right, and resolve them, not partially resolve them, okay, or kind of resolve them, which is what's happening right now in, in the dog training industry. It's kind of partial, never really actually fixing, okay, because the trainer world is not coming from this perspective of foundation of dog that they're a physical animal that is about biting to create their worlds and order that's fact okay so when you understand that and you did not lose track of that you know how to go about things because you understand how dog works and you hit things head on, unlike today's dog training that happens, okay? And I'm going to give you examples that of what's happening with certain things like food aggression, okay? And that's what I'm really focusing on today. A food aggression or a bone, whatever it is, something like that, but food aggression in particular, Okay. And if you try to dance around this behavior, <laughs> as the trainers and behaviors do, that they don't want conflict with the dogs when they work with them with this, they are going about this completely wrong and is telling you if you know anything, right? Right off of when I see these things, I know right away it's an amateur. These are amateur trainers, okay? Because they don't understand the foundation of dog. They forgot. They forgot what they really are. So they're doing the new age human way, more humane way, they think, of trying to talk the dog out of having this aggressive behavior. All right, so let's go over some things or philosophies that is going on out there that's very popular and the most used ways of today's trainers that are trying to resolve food aggression in this tap dancing around, okay? So let's do the first one. The first one is a classic, okay? And this would be to use a bed command. <laughs> so the bed command has been around forever in dog training. The purpose of the bed command, honestly, and why it's taught through history, still till today, people have not changed from hundreds of years ago to now on why they like the bed command, would love their dog to do the bed command. And then trainers, for some reason, which, not for some reason. As I explain this right now, you'll know why they're trying that, okay? The bed command has always been something to send the dog away to go to, to get out of your hair, right? To stop either being annoying Go relax on your bed so I can have some peace. Or somebody's at the front door, and because the dog can't behave when people 
enter the house, the dog goes crazy or it mites or whatever. And the human cannot control that behavior, hasn't fixed it. So the resort of the norm of the human mind is to send them to the bed to stop that behavior. They didn't fix it. They're putting a Band-Aid. It's to stop it. Okay? And in food aggression, I see this a lot. And a trainer, when the food is on the floor, and they know they're going to be aggressive. They send them to a bed to go away from what they're aggressive towards and go to their bed and stay on their bed for right now. So that either you could pick the food up or be around it safely and do what you have to do and not get bitten because you will. <laughs> So this sending to the bed has been in history. All people and trainers love this bed command thing, okay? And the reason that they all, they all have the same mind of why the bed, but they all also have the same lack of understanding what they're doing by using the bed command because they are avoiding life by using the bed command. But to them, it's a great thing. The bed comes in handy. It, it's a convenience, right? So they can stop the dog from doing things it shouldn't do or be aggressive. So they're putting a Band-Aid on it, not fixing the problem. They're sending the dog to its bed because the bed is a crutch. It's a Band-Aid. It saves them in the moment. And people don't even think of this, that they're using the bed as a Band-Aid. They think it's the fix, right? Which is fascinating. Trainers as well. And there's this weird kind of philosophy that I hear from certain training schools that the bed command is a big thing in their system, that it causes respect. It's a big tool that it gives the owners some some power and mind control over the dogs. Not at all. Not at all. I know that for sure. Not at all. And if you fix the behaviors, right, and fix the behaviors, you don't need the bed. I hardly ever teach my clients a bed command. Very rare. They got to beg me because I know why they want it. When I get there, they go, Richard, I would love to teach them a bed command. No, no, wait. Let's fix all the things that bother you. Then you don't need a bed command, you see? But everybody's thinking bed command to stop all the annoying things. The bed command's a savior. So the bed command is not a savior. It's keeping you from actually fixing the things in, instead of sending them away. For trainers who think it's a power game with the bed, that is not at all a truth. That's not how that works. So that is a misunderstanding and misleading because there, there is no such thing as that being so. So this is that bed <laughs> for the aggression. If anything falls, go to your bed. So they avoid any aggressive behavior by the dog. Okay? Because going to the bed just sends them away. but not fix the dog's problem with the food, okay? So the other one, the other method that's going around, which seems fine, you know, seems like it works, seems good in theory, would be the dog is at its food bowl, the owner stays away, and I'm watching a trainer, a very popular trainer on TikTok, millions of followers, and this is what people are watching, right? So the trainer's all the way back here with the owner. They have a little kind of bench seat, and they call this big dog that has food aggression off of it, out of the bowl, up on this bed thing and they give them treats. 
So the dog's getting a double reward, right, for his bad behavior. <laughs> so the dog's aggressive at the food bowl. He dominates it. He controls the room. He controls the owners. Then he knows the owner better not go near that food bowl. Or they're in trouble. So the trainer thinks it's a brilliant idea. No conflict was what he said. We don't want conflict at the bowl. We don't want to fight with the dog and make stress and fight and anger and all that. We want to make a happy, positive experience out of this. So they call the dog off, up onto the bench thing, give him rewards. Okay, you can go eat again. He goes and eats. So what is the dog doing? He's having a great time with this. He goes, I get my way in this both ways. It's a positive for me, win-win. But they will not dare go near my food bowl. I know they won't try me there. They've got to be out of their minds because I will hurt them. So they're going to play to my rules and do this on my terms. That the trainer and owner are going to have to dance around me and not hit this head on and not confront me because I'm a bully and I am checking my owners to make them afraid of me and respect me. So I have fear of the household going on. And I'm enjoying this. I have control. Now the trainer's feeding into this going, oh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Just don't go near him. Let him be. Let him be aggressive. Let him have his aggression. We just won't go near him. And we'll call him off and give him something here so you can call him off the bowl. Right? Thinking, the trainer thinking that he has control over the dog. And he does not. The dog is listening because he's getting something else really good over here for coming off the ball. If there was nothing over here for him, he wouldn't be coming off. So the dog is like, this is awesome. I go to the bowl. I eat in peace. They will never challenge me. I come over here. I get good stuff for coming off. I go back. There's no conflict. Nobody's controlling me. No discipline. No challenge. I still own this house and these people because they're not resolving my problem. They know better than to challenge me. So you, you're going to leave the dog with his aggression and bullying behavior and never resolve it at all. And people are going to have to be careful the rest of his life because you better play this properly. And he knows that you play this incorrectly at all. You are going to get hurt. And he is more than happy to hurt you because he's playing a power game. The food is giving him this way to play the power game. All right. So think of this, right? That when trainers do this, their thought process is a little skewed. Okay. A lot skewed. <clears throat> They're thinking that the food aggression is a behavior itself, that it's not a bullying behavior and it's personal to the owners. It is. They're not seeing it that way. They're seeing it as it's an isolated behavior and we just got to make it a positive out of this behavior to make this good. Okay? N not the real thing that's going on, that it's a challenge. It's a dominance thing. It's, it's telling the owners, I am in charge and I'm above you. The food and dogs may not be aggressive at all with their owners except the food. A bone, food. Classic, the two. And that's because they're normal, even though they carry that all day that they're above them, right? They're just not showing it with aggressive behavior. Until you give them something of primal that now they're going to go, now that that has come out, I have something to use against you. And it's power play time just to show you who's in charge here. And this gives me that way to do that to you. Because in life itself, I don't care. Right? He looks normal. The dog looks normal. No aggression. Except when the food is out and, or a bone. So people stop doing bones, too, because they don't want to deal with that. Right? 
Now, another version that I watch is owners, uh, trainers putting a bowl, giving the dog space, walking around distances, just being around, going to another room, coming around, trying to give the dog space and not make it uncomfortable and make it accept the person's presence because they're not challenging them or making it uncomfortable or negative. So the dog sits with this as long as you stay away. And the trainers will try weeks of this and conditioning and trying to make their presence okay. And, and so the dog tries to maybe get over the aggression without having anything really done or pressure to this game. And closer and closer and around and maybe eventually touch them to see if they'll get bit or not. Okay, so this tap dance game is so unnatural. And let's just say, and take this as an example, that it actually worked for this one individual that's doing all this tap dancing and all this, okay? And let's say it worked. And the dog accepted them and they could pet them and be by the bowl now when they wouldn't before. And if this does happen, just so you know, this would be meaning that this kind of food aggression case was not that big a deal in the first place. It really wasn't a bad case. It was a very minor, subtle case that the dog just had some nervies and just got over it. So it's not a legit aggression case, right? If somebody's able to condition by moving around for weeks and weeks or months and doing that and all of a sudden can pet them and all that, keep that in mind. That would mean it was a very subtle, if at all, very minor kind of aggression case, okay? Now, let's say that that person, it was a real aggression case and this person was able to do this and actually touch them and be around the bowl and all that distance and time and time and closing coming in and it all worked. It did not resolve the problem that it has still. It just got comfortable with that individual. It does not mean it's over because you did not resolve what was under there for sure, right? It's still under there. So eventually you may get bitten for the wrong move, for doing something inappropriate that the dog didn't like, and he still may go after you eventually. Now, the other thing is, does this translate to other people? No. So now anybody else who comes in the vicinity, they go and they get at it again. And it's personal again to this person now. And it would take months and months and months of trying to do that, if ever. And it may not ever take with the other people. And nobody's going to do that. Right? Nobody's going to take the time and everybody else but that one person who is persistent of trying to make this condition. Nobody else is going to go for weeks and months and go around them and try to go around them. And, and it's really aggressive and it's dangerous. So most people stay away from it. They don't want to deal with it. And it never works anyway. So it's very rare also for that one person to be able to get in there and do anything very close or a touch also if it's a true legit aggression case. So that conditioning generally doesn't work at all anyway with the one. Okay, so when you do those things, you are not, because you're not confronting the dog physically and getting at it as they would do with each other, right? In a pack, they're not going to go, you know what, let's condition this around this guy and we'll walk around him for weeks and we'll let him relax and all that. And no, in a pack of dogs that don't live with humans, they're going to resolve it right now, today, in this moment. So if you have a higher ranking dog and that dog is eating, a lower ranking dog is eating and the higher ranking dog comes over and that lower ranking growls at him, oh, it's on. Bam! Oh, 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 shake, they're going to put it to sleep like they're going to get rid of this behavior right now and that dog will never challenge again 
and they'll all eat in peace and harmony and take their place what they should and respect that leader, respect that guy that he's not playing and he's going to put you in your place if you want to try confrontation. Okay, because the dogs that are eating at the bowls are telling you they want conflict. They are looking for a physical problem to teach you a lesson. And they are controlling their environment through their aggressive behavior because that's their nature. And they have no problem with hurting you. That's genetics. That's nature. It's physical. It's about the bite. Okay? So... The concepts of bed, not confronting at all, not challenging the issue, just sending him to a bed and letting him be what he is and never controlling the behavior or confronting it, not going to work. The uh, calling the dog out of a bowl over to something here, calling him off the bowl, giving him food, in that, not resolved. Right, It might now, right now, to people who don't know better, oh, yes, but look, he comes and he comes off when he's told. And then he goes back when you say, and he goes and eats. It looks like the owner has control right now. Look, he comes off when he's told. Wow. And then when they go, okay, he goes back and he eats when he's told on permission. Wow. That's, that's a facade. That is not true at all. Like, the underneath of what's going on. Yes, it looks like there's control and they have, you know, they're in the dog's head. No, because if they go near that food bowl right now, the dog will tell them who's in control and what's really going on. But no, they're going to avoid this and make it look like they are getting their way with this, right? And then the moving around it and conditioning for a while and trying to get near the dog and all that, again, is not going to work because you're only doing it with one person. It doesn't translate to everybody. And then it's very rare that one person ever gets that done if it's real aggression. Okay? So the only resolve to this is to day one, right? I have bought many aggressive dogs, right? Didn't know that they were that aggressive. Bought them from Europe. They get here and they want to kill me day one for anything. So I get at it and I get at them and I fix that relationship and then they love me and we, uh, we have harmony and we have a great relationship because that is dog. Establishing that hierarchy and pack, I cannot tiptoe around when I buy these dogs that they want to challenge me. Okay, they're establishing themselves right off the bat that who they are and who I'm going to be to them. No, I control this. I am in power and let's get at it and let's fix that right now. And then we get it all in harmony. Okay, that is the way. And it's the only way to really solve food aggression, bone aggression. There is no tiptoeing around it, giving treats, uh, trying to dance around, make it all positive for the dog, because that's not the way they work with each other. So you always, again, have to look at how dogs still till today, even if they're domesticated, that is the way it happens in the litters. And our breeders are able to write in a chart, puppy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, exactly in the order of dominance to the weakest, exactly in the order of knowing who they are by the fighting inside the pack as the litter. That's how we know and we can judge. Put a blue color on this one, it's the toughest one. Put a green color on it, it's the second toughest. Put a yellow color, it's the third toughest. Okay? And that's how most of my breeders work. They know by observing all the aggression of who's the toughest to the second all the way to the weakest and what homes those dogs should go to and not go to because we know who they are going to be as adults at six weeks old. So this is the way it should be looked at. Nature always for anything going back to what dog really is. Not the philosophy in this new age and science coming out and saying and all this because it is not correct. It's inaccurate. It's misleading. And that is why today... More than ever in the last two years, this has gotten so much worse in the dog training industry. 
where people seeking help for aggression or fear, reactivity, spend so much money on two trainers, three trainers, four trainers, maybe more if they're willing to keep going, and tap themselves out of cash and money and now are deflated because they feel that the training industry is a joke and that with all the money they spend, they really can't get the help they need. And then when they find people like us who will fix this, they don't trust it anymore. Well, I've had all these four and I did this and I spent thousands and thousands. There was no result whatsoever. What could you do differently? What, what could I, everything. And I will get you the result, right? So, it, but it's hard for them now to put the money out, the trust in trainers. So by the time they get to actually good trainers, valid trainers that really know their stuff, trainers like us become the last ones that they'll seek because they don't want to deal with the methods that actually work. And it's not because they're barbaric. It's not because, right, we're, we're killing them with the collars or the, you know, <laughs> overdoing, suppressing them. It's not about that at all. Nothing to do with that. It, but we have to challenge it, right? In a way, we have to challenge it or else we're not going to get a result. And that's the problem. And all these trainers out there and behaviors nowadays, and all the public, of course, falls for this, that anything that's outside of a positive or a little yank here with a slip lead or whatever it is, anything else beyond that's negative and that's too much. And, and I don't want to hurt him and I don't want to. So everything is falling and falling and falling. So people are get, having a harder time finding great trainers. And being able to resolve their issues because the industry is telling them all that trainers like us are barbaric, but we're the only ones who get the results 100%. And the dogs are happy and they eat normal and they're all good because we are playing the game of the pack thing, the real thing, doing things in the way dog would do with dog. We're not dancing around it. But we get happy dogs. We get normal dogs. They eat normal now. They don't fight us. They don't go after us. They, it's all good. We put it in perspective for them. Okay? So this, it's, it's just wanted to bring this to the table because, I, and again, I don't watch any trainers. I don't do. If you know me well, you know me. I do not go on social media and look at any trainers. I don't care. I don't want to see. It. My method has worked for 30 years. It will always work. It's the fastest method ever in history to resolve aggression and fear. It works. It absolutely works. I don't need to look around and see what people are doing. I don't care because there's no way they could get something faster than I can. That's not going to happen. That can't be. Okay, so I don't look at the world. I don't look at trainers. I don't care what they do. I don't care. I, I, it's not worth my time looking. Okay, but the only reason I'm bringing this up is because other trainers will show me a video that's going on out there and go, what do you think of this? This is very popular right now with these popular Instagram trainers or TikTok. And I start to go, oh, my God. Okay, so this is why I'm bringing things like this to the table and going to do more videos like this. So there's more awareness and education on what to avoid if you're going to hire a trainer. Don't fall for these things. Okay, there's really one way to go about this, really, for full results. Not partial, not kind of. <laughs> All right. And thousands and thousands of cases to prove that it's worked. I have that under my belt. 
and I know all the methods out there and I know what they actually do and where they'll get you and all that. Nothing new is going on today. It's been done forever. It's just, it, it goes in stages. So that is food aggression. And then I'll start to come up with other aggression cases or different areas of aggression and talk about that. Till next time, I'm Richard Hines.